Say I'm performing a penetration test. I'm inside my Kali Linux virtual machine and I am up against a target called royalsecurity.com. So I could do all the normal stuff that we start with, all the usual boilerplate repetitive processes to begin enumeration or reconnaissance and we can start with an Nmap scan to look for open ports and services. And when the results come back, it's a bit interesting. Hey, we see there's port 80 for HTTP, just a classic website. We also have 81 odd, different, strange, not usually 80 that we're used to seeing. HTTPS on port 443, 7001, 9000, so odd stuff that we could go interrogate. Honestly, I'm more interested in port 81 because that seems pretty out of place. Now I can open this up in my web browser and here we are at royalsecurity.com on port 81 claiming we are best security services with some like default lorem ipsum filler text. Welcome to our security services company. Uh, okay. Seemingly some pretty cheesy stuff. I guess there's an about us page, which again, just has default lorem ipsum text. A blog here, which is interesting. <laughs> what is lorem ipsum? Uh, some oddball sections here. Although I'm curious, looks like there was a button to edit just on that previous page. If I click on this, oh, I could just straight up edit the text. Could I do some cross-site scripting, right? Maybe put anything we might like in some header tags or a simple script. Maybe we could just alert one, see if JavaScript will come through on that page. Let me submit, and that didn't seem to work. How about in the title? We could try to run that. Oh, there we go, that will fire. So we have cross-site scripting present there. That might be one finding. We also have a contact us form we could beat up or a login section that might have some potential SQL injection. We could try to enter a username, oh, admin, admin, maybe some default credentials there. Worth a try, some quick cursory tests. There is also a search page. We could see, hey, if we want to look for anything, interestingly, that immediately tells me that I searched for none. And this is just kind of doing some regular manual testing, right? If I were to search for the letter A, will we get any results? No, which is odd. A percent sign though, if we were thinking this was querying a database and maybe we're using some tools like Wappalizer to try to understand, hey, how's this really all put together? But a percent sign, which is one of the wild cards in that SQL or structured query languages that return stuff, which is peculiar to me because I'll then try to look for different quotes like double quotes or even single quotes we could try to supply manually. Mm, and that seemingly breaks something. We get a big error, SQLite 3 operational error, unrecognized token of a single quote in the midst of some others. And this looks like a flask work zug debug error meshes, right? We see the whole trace back and we could even get a little bit more insight in the application and the source code itself. That debug mode should not have been left on for a production website. And we've seen this quite a bit, right? But there's interesting, hey, maybe accept statement, calling deliberate eval failed, uh, connections to a database where we try to execute a query based off of our input that's provided as a format string. So while we might be able to do some SQL injection, maybe we could do some other damage just as well. Let me go back to that page. Let me see if I could do a union select one and then a comment out because we know this is SQLite. Let me search for that. Oh, error. Select to the left and right of the union do not have the same number of columns. We could try that again, adding another column number. Hey, trying to see if we could return any results or entries in the database. We'll get another error, but we can sort of by hand try this over and over and over again, seeing different results. I think I found about five is what will return some values given the title, the actual text, and some details. So now we know we have SQL injection as another working vulnerability and potential exploit. But remember, when we had an error, we could see that this was a format string in Python, which might just evaluate and allow us to run code. Kind of odd, right? Say I looked for one plus one as a literal string here. Uh, okay, that's actually working through. Maybe the plus sign isn't gonna work just fine for me. How about a division? No, still not looking good. How about one times two? Well, it's worth experimenting. What if we searched for parentheses, something weird? How about some square braces? Nothing? Okay, what if I tried just an import statement in Python using the double underscores where I import OS? Will that return a value here? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, operational error near OS syntax. So it must have tried to do something, but my single quotes got in the way. How about I run that same thing with double quotes? Will that actually be evaluated? Well, that just gives me the string, but we can again kind of keep testing. Let's try to run a command with the system function where we could do like sleep five. How about that? Let me see if I can run this and it takes a little bit. Oh, got a timeout. So that web server was waiting for the sleep command to finish and didn't have a result to return to us and then timed out. We could actually probably see that in action if we tried a smaller number. I could sleep for just like two seconds there and try to search for this. That should respond, presumably it did, but it waited two seconds. Now this means we could run arbitrary Python code just as well. And hey, obviously with our proof of concept for running the OS library and other system functions or calls and methods, we could just do arbitrary code execution to run any shell commands that we want like PWD, who am I, DIR, et cetera. Problem is though that is blind currently, we won't see the output, we'll just know that it presumably ran. But we could get a reverse shell or control and actually take advantage and fully compromise this web page. Now, if you remember, there were a couple other ports from our Nmap scan that we could go dig into and try to interact with. I can go back to my web browser and try, I don't know, that port 7001 which is a little bit interesting. You don't see that very often. No, that didn't return anything, but at least when I'd normally see 7,001, it's usually also paired with 7,000, which let's see if that has anything. I know Nmap might not scan that by default, but that's some of our own experience, some of our own intuition, some of our own usual, hey, sharpening our skill set in penetration testing and ethical hacking, right? Now, here's the thing. I kind of lied to you. I led you astray. I'm not actually targeting this royalsecurity.com. In fact, that's a completely different website. And this is called pentestground.com. Pentest hyphen ground. And it is a collection of vulnerable applications that might actually help you benchmark your own scanners, your own tools like Nmap, like Ferox Buster, like GoBuster, if we tried to directory brute force and try to, hey, scan and see what might we find on that website. So I'll be honest, what I showed you for port 81 of royalsecurity.com is actually this Guardian Leaks application over on Pentest Ground port 81, and it has a couple other vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting like we saw, server-side request forgery and code injection, but there are even others here. Hey, we saw that port 7001 for web logic apparently and shadow logic. 9000 looks like that was a REST application programming interface or an API. Even has damn vulnerable GraphQL and damn vulnerable web application just for you to test your skills and learn a little bit. And they've got an old version of Redis. You can see that port 6379 didn't come back from the Nmap scan, but might have some common vulnerability and exposures or vulnerabilities and CVEs we could throw against it. But I wanted to show you this resource so you have another test bed, another sandbox to practice your penetration testing skills. And I think it's a worthy conversation because it gets into all of the repetition that we were just doing. Like you always run an Nmap scan, like you always use GoBuster, DurBuster, Ferox Buster, whatever. And you do that manual sort of recon and enumeration. Like I did testing payloads of a percent sign or a single quote or some command injection tricks. But the thing is we do that over and over and over again for different penetration tests. It's always that repeated tedious process. But the thing is we do that for every single penetration test. It's the same process as repeated iterated just the tedious stuff that we might be able to streamline. In fact, this whole pentestground.com is one of the solutions provided by pentesttools.com. With pentesttools.com, you can centralize and streamline your hacking efforts. It's your essential penetration testing tools all in one place. So you can save time, speed run through the boring stuff and focus on the more important custom and creative work. Pentesttools.com is a web-based platform that lets you cruise through the common boilerplate steps of a pen test. Reconnaissance, vulnerability scanning, exploit validation, and even report writing. But Pentesttools.com doesn't want to replace humans in the loop. Your skills are absolutely vital to the pen test, but supplemented with a streamlined toolkit that amplifies all that you can do. 
Check out their website vulnerability scanner or their network vulnerability scanner, which accurately detects over 21,000 vulnerabilities across their database. And one of the coolest tools, Sniper, their auto exploiter, will automatically validate exploitation against critical CVEs. Whether or not you're an offensive security team or a defender or system administrator, you can displace multiple other tools, scanners, and frameworks with the one-of-a-kind platform that lets you focus on what really matters. Try Pentesttools.com and join a platform trusted by over 1,500 security teams in over 95 countries. You can get started for free with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash pentesttools. Huge thanks to pentesttools.com for sponsoring this video. Now, look, I don't wanna beat a dead horse here, but I honestly really do wanna showcase Pentest Tools just cause I think it's so stinking cool. Like it makes things so easy and so streamlined. So let me log in and let me just show you this thing in action. And you can use a whole lot of these scanners, like these different tools right away, just for free. Like I can go ahead and spin up our website site scanner. Let me add our target here, HTTPS uh, pentest-ground.com, and we were looking at port 81 for our royalsecurity.com, whatever, that vulnerable web page we knew we were beating up. And we could run a light scan or deep scan or a custom scan, and we're good with the defaults, but you could add authentication, you could set a custom scan time, follow redirects and whatever behavior you want, and even send notifications in however way you'd like when the scan is complete. Let me go ahead and check the box I'm authorized to scan this target and we can go ahead and start scan. Now this is really, really cool because this is where Pentest Tools just does everything for us. It has completely streamlined a lot of the manual enumeration that we would have just done while we were poking around with the website. Looks like it's already found some cutesy, hey, insecure cookie settings. Sure, that is a finding. HTTP only, X-Frame options, content security policy, blah, blah, blah. But let me let this keep running. It'll find some interesting stuff. Oh, it even found a login interface. So we could add authentication, say we found credentials, right? We could open up the scan logs on the side. And this is just kind of neat. You can see a little bit more of the nerdy details as to everything it's doing. But I'll close out of that because you could see, hey, it's cruising through a couple different injection points. And it's literally trying the same sort of payloads that we did. I'm scrolling from the bottom here now because I wanted to dig through everything that it uncovered. Nothing found for interesting files or sensitive files, untrusted certificates, robots.txt, yada, yada, yada. Ooh, but it did try some login attempts, maybe creating some posts, oh, and editing posts the same way that we did previously. Ooh, even flagged security.txt. I like that RFC inclusion. Oh, and it even gets screenshots. That is so cool. Same sort of like WAPalyzer functionality to see and uncover what technology or software stack might be running behind it. Suspicious comment, interesting. Ooh, secure this against blind SQL injection. <laughs> that's so funny that it found that. Oh, I like a little joke of it finding HTTP, other data that's pulled externally from different resources, but had it found some of the exploitation? A lot of vulnerabilities for server-side software, cores misconfiguration. It's still scanning, but ooh, here is a pretty cool finding. Server side request forgery with access to an internal service. Oh, when you inject the Amazon AWS metadata, like to go to the management stuff. Yeah, AMI, it can track down a little bit of the metadata and really get into, I don't know, the EC2 or AWS instance stuff, right? Oh, and it found SQL injection right in the search query, just as we saw earlier. They tried the A single quote payload like we were tampering with earlier, and then full-blown Python code injection, just as we saw, but they actually use import with the URL lib request to call back to an external domain just to validate, hey, they've got that code execution. That's so wild. It's so cool that it automatically found that and we didn't have to do anything else. We just gave it the URL and said, go track it down. Look at that big high risk, of course, because we saw that code execution, but Pentest tools rip that apart. Now it'll automatically add that into our assets tab so we can kind of keep track of it. We'll see scans and findings and everything just as well in the navigation. But if there's more that we wanted to dig into, like we saw the rest API on port 9,000. We could just slap that in just as well. Pentestground.com on port 9,000. And again, I think we're just good. Hey, I'm authorized to scan it and fire it up. Oh, this one requires an openapi.json so it knows how to crawl it. We could upload one if we were able to track it down or you could even supply some work from Postman, another one of those tools. So let me see if this will cruise through it. 
with that openAPI.json. Yeah, it's putting in work. Found that uh, Python code injection again, and even XML external entity injection, some XXE we could do in there. SQL injection, of course, other endpoints that it could track down from the API, and that is just too cool. Like, if we were to use the port scanner just as well, we could basically have pen test tools rip apart anything that's part of this endpoint. Pass in the host name and IP address one more time, do everything as we've done, but I'm curious, could we use Sniper? that auto exploiter and kind of point it at something to say, look, what are you up against? Would it be able to see the Redis instance and shadow logic, these things that have a CVE or a known off the shelf exploit available to them? I'm gonna enter the target pentestground.com and I am gonna speed this up just by supplying those ports. Let me at the very least try that 6379 for Redis and see if it'll track it down. Safe exploits only, ooh, you could just toggle off things that might crash the target or break a system. But at least if we're trusting, hey, let's fire it off. Let's see if we could see this thing in action. Looking for open ports. It's trying to connect to 6379 for Redis, Redis, however you say it. Oh my goodness, target successfully exploited. At least one service running in that target was found vulnerable and successfully exploited for that CVE. That's so slick. Sniper managed to obtain remote code execution as root and it validates, look, we're already in that working directory. Figured out all of the endpoint information like the computer name, host name, and IP address. And with that, we could see all the commands that they ran, like who am I, you name, etc. Oh, that's so cool. We could, of course, export those results, HTML, PDF, JSON. I just think that's so slick. Oh, one thing to note though, Sniper does not automatically generate findings, but if you wanted to fill that out, we could run the network vulnerability scan, and that'll include even some Sniper modules. And it just rips it apart. You could see your entire attack surface if you were looking across multiple different endpoints or hosts. You could set custom handlers, like if you wanted your own webhook for cross-site scripting or HTTP, SSRF, and even Sniper. Oh, okay, I could just sing the praises of pen test tools for days, but I just, look, you could even add your own team, other operators on a pen test, or have some integrations between Slack, Jira. Okay, okay, I'm done fanboying over all this cool stuff. But hey, that is pen test tools. Seriously, look, I know that it'll sponsor the video, but I honestly really love the stuff that they have. I think it's so cool and just so streamlined and like I didn't have to go through the SQL injection attempts that I was trying or just fumbling around with the Python syntax to try and get that code injection. It could just streamline it and then I could move on to the more interesting stuff or actually validating more of those vulnerabilities and exploits. That is awesome and it could save tons of time and resources during a pen test. So big love, big shout out, big kudos to pen test tools and seriously check them out. Link in the video description, jh.live slash pen test tools. I hope you try it out on your next engagement or assessment. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things like comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.